It's a beautiful day out here today in Lagos State. As you're already entering into the cool part of the year, you're welcome to Behind the Brand. And my name is Elizabeth Aige. Today, we have something very hot for you that you do not want to miss. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. behind the brand. Sometimes the stress of going through the process of making homemade food can make you have a rethink and you just want to opt for something that is a lot easier to get, less stressful and then you can just go somewhere, grab it and have your meal. And then at other times you just not feel like eating homemade food. So one of the easiest things to grab for food is, or even as a snack, is bread. And then bread can be combined with any other thing you can imagine. As far as you can think it, you can have it with bread. We have things like butter, tea, jam, bama, anything. And as the local food here in Nigeria, we have bread and beans. Or bibi, like students, most of the students usually call it. Bibi standing for bread and beans, like I said. Now today we are at Bakersville, that specializes in making breads. And we are going to be learning how they make their own special bread. Stay tuned guys, you do not want to miss this. We'll be right back. I'm married. I graduated from University of Winneba. I schooled in Ghana and I studied management science. I'm running my own business, as you can see, after job hunting for quite some time. Bread didn't come to my mind actually. It didn't even cross it at all. I was thinking of other things, but eventually my husband made mention of the bakery. I was like, why not try bread? And I was like, oh, okay. I was, I was skeptical initially, but I said, okay, let's give it a trial. Then one way or the other, there was a connection. There was, there was a connecting factor between myself and um, someone who owned a bakery. And that was how I went for a training and it just took. And I was like, this is it. This is what God actually wants me to do, you know. And I went for the training and did all that. And today, we started and we are doing very well. Um, from start to finish, we have our special recipe in which we mix down. That's the baker doesn't even know what we mix together. So we do the measurement, it has its own measurement. Everything in baking business has its measurement, so we have our measurement. For now, I'm the one doing the recipe. So after that, we measure the flour. We have a particular measurement for the flour. Like our mixer now makes a 12.5 kg of flour, of bread. So we mix our flour, put it in the mixer, measure our flour rather, put it in the mixer, measure our um, butter, put it in the mixer with the recipe that had already been mixed, put it in the mixer. Then we use very cold water, in fact, block. If you have block, if possible, close to blocked water. If not, it's because the, the mixer, you know, as it mixes, it, um, it creates heat. So you need very hot, cold water for it to be able to stand, for the dough to be able to stand, you understand? So we use very cold water then we start mixing. We mix the dough, we wait for like, um, depends on the mixer, um, we put it on the eye, then we mix for about 20 minutes. Then when it's ready, we know when it's ready, you know, it's, it's elastic, there's a way it is when we know. Then we remove it, put it on our table, we have our scale, then we start measuring, we start cutting our dough. The whole of that, we have the 200 naira bread, and we have the 300 naira bread, and we have the other special bread. So they all have their own measurement. So we cut them into their various measurements. Then we knead, we mold, and put into the pan. 
then we leave to rise. They call the process proofing process. That's the process of rising. You know, so we leave that for, it takes a very long time actually. It um, rises for about two to three hours. Yes, for about two to three hours before it rises. Then when it rises, then we put on our oven to generate heat. So the oven will be hot before you put the bread in it. If not, the bread might practically fall. So it has to be hot, then put your bread in it. Then it stays for another 30 minutes for it to get done. Then you bring it out of the oven and it's ready to grow. We have some people who want hot bread. Yes, we have some people who love hot bread. It doesn't have to be cold, but before you slice your bread, it has to be very, very cold. You can't slice, you can't even slice the warm bread. Then like the sardine bread, we cut it into its measurements, then put our sardine in it, then roll it and put it in the pan. But for the fruit bread, what I do, everybody, different people with their different method of doing things. But what we do is um, we cut it into their measurements, put it back into the mixer so the fruit will mix well into it then put the fruit into it, then just mix it slowly for some time so the fruit will just be everywhere inside the bread. So then we'll bring it out and cut it again. The same process for the coconut bread too. Chocolate bread is, we had real dark chocolate. When you taste it, it's very cho chocolatey, you understand. We put um, cocoa powder, dark chocolate, you feel it, you feel the chocolate when you're eating the bread. Yes, so that's what makes it different. Bromates, like I know of, it's not very good for the health. It's also a form of riser. It makes the bread rise, makes it look big. You understand? It's all in the bid to make profits, to make extra profits, you know? So it makes you get more healed than the normal, you understand? Like if I put bromates in my bread, instead of, let's say I'm making 10 loaves, instead of 10 loaves, I can get over 15 loaves because it makes it rise, yes, and it's, it's, it's not very good for the health. So bromate for me is a no-no, it's a no-no. And if you see most, most bakeries now, when you see their bread, you see bromate free, bromate free. Everybody's conscious of his health. So we are also very conscious of our customers' health. So bromate, it's, it's not it for us. Yeah, every business has its own challenge. Any business that doesn't go through challenge, I don't think they are doing well because you have to face the challenge for you to grow and it makes you a better person. The bread business is very, very challenging. Actually, I never expected it. I never envisaged the challenges this much, but um, okay, one of the challenge I faced was being able to start very small because I came back to the ordinary low level. Like, when I started, I didn't, I didn't have anything. I had the space, because this was the space I was using for the restaurant. I had the space, but there was no equipment for bread. And we know that bread equipments are very, very expensive. And I was like, where will I start? So number one challenge I faced was starting very small. Starting with a cake mixer, an industrial cake mixer in this big place and one small oven. But I summoned up courage and I started. The first day we started, I produced five loaves of bread the whole of the day. You know, gradually, we started five loaves, three loaves. The first day we sold like three loaves and so on like that. But I almost gave up. I almost gave up. I was the only one doing everything except for the help of my husband when he comes in to assist once in a while. But the baking, the cleaning, the everything, I was doing it. That was a ch one challenge on its own. Then as we grew, as we are growing, another challenge of getting a very good baker, a very good baker, it's, I, I was, it's really, that was a big challenge on its own, getting a baker. I got, I got one that almost ruined the business eventually got another one which was good but the distance than the one I'm using presently. I'm facing challenges too but we're overcoming it gradually, you know. Challenging of get, challenges of getting a very good baker was there. Then 
challenges of eventually getting equipment, the financial aspects and all that. It was, it was not easy, but one way or the other, we were able to acquire it. From the cake mixer, we were able to get our own bread mixer. We were able to, able to get our bread slicer. We were able to, we've been able to get our oven. And gradually, from the sales of five loaves, we are, in a day, we are approaching close to 200 loaves in a day right now. So that's another challenge we're able to face. Then challenge of your bread not coming out well at times. Like last week, I lost close to, close to 20 loaves of bread, of big 300 Naira bread. And you know what that means to this business because the profit margin is not so much. So when you lose that much, it's a whole lot for us because this business is all about the turnover. So it was the fault of the baker actually. So that's one of the challenges I told you about the baker and all that, their carelessness and all. Some of the bread got burnt, some fell, some it was just snotted. So that whole day was, and at times it happens regularly when you lose like two, three loaves, you know, it happens. So by the time we consider all this, you know, you keep wondering why we are still in business, but we have good prospects. That's why we're still in business. Love bread, but just that I had to cut down on bread because of my weight, because it's fattening. But I really love bread. Butter, I do mayonnaise, I do pear, I do beans. I've done pineapple before. Anything. I love my bread. It's very hard to meet people who don't love bread. I think everybody loves bread, in my opinion, because um, it's it's something you can just get as you go. You get, and you can use to do different things. And you have different recipes, different varieties of bread. The agege bread, the one you get from ShopRite, the one you get from everywhere, the cake bread, there are different kinds of bread. So even if you don't like the agege bread, you could like the cake bread or all the twist bread itself. Ah, I eat bread at, at least four or five times a week. And most times, three times a day. It all depends on the, you know, bread is a food you don't need uh, any other thing. You just buy it and you start chewing. If you like, you add butter. If you like, you apply butter. If you like you add other things, but if you don't, you can just apply it. If you are you, you are hard on on you know on finance, you can just pick bread, 15 naira, 100 naira, and then and then um, you go ahead and then you chew and use water to push it down or mineral. I mean, uh, cook or fanta as the case may be. It all depends. At my age, mayonnaise. In those days, egg, fried eggs. I do beans occasionally. Yeah, bread is commercial in the sense that, apart from the fact that. Um, bakery does it. There are a lot of people in the chain of distribution. There are people who buy in quantity, there are people who retail, and what more. You use bread all that, all, all also to, I've seen people do, um, they do, and then you can go ahead and sell. You know, they put in other things, and then they a sandwich, I know, and still sell, and still sell, you know. So you can make money out of it, really. And then there are malams who sell tea, you know, they use bread, you know, that's one of the things, so it's commercial. I love agege bread with uh, beans agoya. That to go beans with that red oil. And that pepper. Oh, that, if you eat that combination, is very sweet. Apart from that, that's what agege bread is best for. <laughs> you understand? Then when you want to use to drink tea, you cannot go for ordinary bread. Yeah, butter, coconut bread, but I prefer that coconut or Bread. You know, since, since I discovered that bread, and that is the only bread my children love. Chocolate bread, I eat them when I was abroad. You know, those kind of uh, perish. You understand? Where you can break them into two and put chocolate inside. It's not normally Nigerian kind of uh, bread because we don't know how to do that bread here. So one thing I have to say is that anything the government have to do to make the price to cut down. 
<laughs> it's better. You understand? Because uh, average Nigerian man cannot do, in a, cannot live a day without eating bread. You understand? It's like rice. It's like a bar to Nigerians. And we can't stay every day without eating bread. I eat bread regularly. Every fact, I've eaten it now before I start this interview. I've eaten it with beans. It's an everyday meal. Go go around, you see, go to where they are selling food, Buka. You will see people, 10 to 15 people eating bread and beans. Or bread with something else. It's economical. If I if I have time, if I'm not too busy, I like to fry egg with the bread. But if I'm on the walk or on the hustle like this, it's with beans. Whether gigi bread though, whether branded bread though, bread with beans. Of this economic, it used to stand in the stomach. I know sardine bread, coconut bread, uh, I know all those bread, yes, fruity bread, yes, no. Yes, they are nice, they are nice. But bread is important, uh, it's, it's, it stands, it's fat. When you take bread, for that day, you, you, you nobody will know, you, you hold yourself, at least for that day, you'll be, you be confident before you feel anything. It's not a light food, it's a solid food. When you take it, it stands in your stomach. Bread business is a serious business. I mean, it's so easy to just go somewhere, pick bread, you want to buy bread, but the process that goes into making this bread is, wow, I am so surprised that it is this long. I used to think it was so easy to make bread. Well, it's not so hard because there are machines that do most of the work now, and then the, the end product just makes it all worth it. Now, when you're trying to make bread, you have to mix all the ingredients, like it was said in the interview, I'm just doing a recap, you mix all the in ingredients together with a mixer, of course, and you mix the things that you, the other special things you need to mix with them, and then you cut to your size, you cut to size, and the sizes have to be spot on, measured in grams, has to be spot on, then you turn and then you put it in a pan and wait for it to rise, for the dough to rise for about two to three hours. This one we did took about two and a half hours to rise, and that is the longest part of it. Like you just have to patiently wait for it to rise. And then you put it in the oven and then you keep checking it until it is ready to be eaten and it is hot and you just want to eat it. Now the heat that comes out of this oven, ha, ah, it's, it's very serious. And this is the usual butter bread that we know very well, but of course, there is a special recipe to make it different and I mean it has this really cute look that makes it different from any bread you see out there. Then here we have the coconut bread, really fine. The way the coconut flakes come out of it makes you know that okay yes this is like real coconut bread. And then we have the sardine bread. This one looks all sardine, it's like sardine cut in pieces into tiny tiny pieces and put into the bread. Very, very nice. And then we have the fruit bread. The fruit is made from raisins and it's poured. You saw how, the, how it was mixed and everything. And then lastly, we have the chocolate bread that looks very chocolatey too. Now all this bread that we know started coming up. I mean the varieties, the different varieties of bread started coming up when people started being innovative about bread, making something that would give them an edge in the business and all. Before that, it was usually the butter bread, the normal butter bread that everybody ate, that mostly in Nigeria we call agege bread. That was before now. But here we have it at Bakersville. Everything different. They have their own special ingredients that make their own varieties different from the same varieties made somewhere else. Yes, that's the end of today's show. Join us again on Behind the Brand. My name is Elizabeth Aibe. Bye. Thank you.